So the story Coyote and the Enemy Aliens by Thomas King is a short story that uh, indirectly talks about the experience of the internment of Japanese Canadians through the eyes of three uh, people in the story. Um, and it also is a, a metaphor for the treatment of Indigenous peoples in Canada. So the three main characters we have, the first one is the narrator, who is kind of childish. Uh, the way this person speaks, they don't really have ideas of their own. They don't question anything. Um, when uh, he says to Coyote, oh, well, the enemy aliens, they, they look like you and me. But Coyote says, no, they're not. And the narrator doesn't question it. The narrator doesn't even question what they can see with their own eyes. So um, that's a challenge there for the, the childish niche and the, the lack of critical independent thinking of the narrator. They just don't question anything. They let these horrible things happen. The next character that we have is Coyote. And Coyote is mostly seen as someone who um, makes a lot of mistakes, is a trickster in Indigenous culture. We usually learn by their example of their mistakes. So we learn how not to be through the experience of Coyote. Um, that person is usually, well, in this case, in the story, that person is ignorant. Uh, they can't distinguish right from wrong. Coyote can't even make good choices and trust knows who to trust. I mean, he gets, or they get thrown in jail themselves and they don't question the people that throw them in jail. They just go ahead and say, okay, now I'm out. Now I'm gonna go, um, support the the next mission in New Mexico, which in the uh, historical reality of the world, what happened in New Mexico was the development of the atomic bomb, which was later dropped on Japan and killed uh, hundreds of thousands of people in a short time. So there was nothing about peace in what Coyote was doing there. And finally, we have the white men. Uh, these are the people who make the rules. They order the internments because um, they have their own belief system. They have this strong sense of nationalism that is into ultra nationalism because they've now become so fanatically obsessed with their own uh, success of their country and their people that they're willing to put other people in harm's way so that they can achieve that success that they believe is theirs. They also don't believe they make mistakes. Um, and if they do mistakes, they just prefer to cover them up instead of accepting blame. So now what you're going to need to do is decide which character represents who in the internment of Japanese Canadians. So of the three characters, which one do you think is the government of Canada? Do you think the narrator um, who doesn't have ideas of his own, is childish, easily manipulated, um, would believe any sort of poster that was put in front of him or her without questioning it? Um, do you think that person represents the government or is it Coyote, the ignorant one who um, is selfish and can't tell right from wrong and trusts the wrong people? Um, or is it the white men um, who are blind to the wrongdoings that they do and cover them, cover up their mistakes? Um, which one do you think represents the government of Canada? Next, who represents the everyday citizens of Canada? Again, it could be the narrator, coyote, or white men. Which one is the everyday citizens of Canada? The people who could have had the power to stop this terrible thing from happening to the enemy aliens or the Japanese, but didn't do it because they didn't question anything or they didn't stand together. Um, there's even a, a special quote in there that um, the narrator says, it's dangerous to read newspapers. Why was it so dangerous to read newspapers? Was there a fear of um, learning about what was actually happening, if the truth actually hit them in the face, how would people react? Would that make them feel dangerous that they have that knowledge and they know that they are complicit in something terrible that's happening? So which ones, I kind of gave it away there, which ones would be the everyday citizens of Canada? And finally, the last one would be the police. Who do you think represents the police that enforce the, um, the internment? 